Why do you come to Ireland? Yeah, because I love to count with the people and the pikes. <laughs> <laughs> many rivers and lakes vary enormously in character, from the wild mountain lochs of the west to the rich waters of the Midlands. But nearly all of them hold pike, large pike. It's a fish that's found all over the northern hemisphere, but international records show that over the years, the world's largest specimens have come from Irish rivers and lakes. Look at this. Beautiful. It's fantastic. Oh. Oh, I can't wait to get going. There's about 22 trees down there. And we could cast actually from here. It's autumn at Killykeen on the Urn system in County Cavan. Colin Brett is an English pike angling specialist who's more familiar with Cambridge's Fenland waterways. His host in Ireland is Hugh Goff of the Central Fisheries Board a cavern man with an intimate knowledge of these waters. I've seen these. This, have is, this is a boily bag. Yeah. Use this for boiled carp baits. Yeah. Well, I've used mine for my dead baits. Very effective, keeps the baits frozen all day. Individually wrapped, the smelt. Indeed. Very yeah. That's important. They're yeah, very difficult to get out of a block when they're all frozen together. Yeah, even the herring I have, a, have some newspaper on it. Yeah. The latest news on the herring. Cut the head off the herring. Yeah. Let's the juices out. Yeah. They're very tough skin, so you have no problem with casting generally. They usually stay on quite well in the cast. Yes. It's got a very peculiar smell. Well, have you smelled it? Oh, <laughs> come on, a funny Englishman. <laughs> the tackle's fairly hefty, more like shore fishing gear than what you commonly see on freshwater. This isn't so much because of the size of the pike as the size of the baits. They may weigh up to six ounces each and have to be cast a considerable distance. Ireland's largest pike have all come from waters that have good runs of salmon and sea trout. It seems that these highly nutritious fish have the calories to feed a monster. Under Irish law, an angler is not allowed to fish with more than two rods at a time. He must also have a coarse fishing license and is not allowed to use live bait. Yeah, you could well be tied to that by the end of the day. <laughs> Because of the um, slightly snaggy bottom, I thought I'd put on a, a rig that should keep us clear. It's a point body. When you cast out, that will actually stand upright on the bottom. And with a buoyant bait, you'll be a good distance off the bottom and away from snags, highly visible to any pike that are searching for by sight. See the air coming out. Now that should float for a good hour or so like that. 
with pike fishing, but seeing the float either dive under or the indicator drop, you pick the rod up and you never know what's on the other end. It could be that 40. And that's the thing that keeps me going. Yes, he's got on there. Go for it. There is a fish on it. There's a bloody fish on it. Come on, you buddy. As soon as that line's going away, I've got good indication of a fish. I pull into it. I don't wait. The chance of losing the fish doesn't worry me. I would rather lose the fish, not hook it at all, than gut hook or damage the fish in any way. There are people who would, after missing a few fish, perhaps delay the strike. It's not the way to do it. Fish must always come first. If you haven't got an unhooking mat or some very soft piece of apparatus to put it on, you look for the nearest piece of grass. Never put them down on concrete, on shingle or anything rough. Always goes on something soft. Oh yes, he's a good fish, beautiful twin. We have the unhooking mat, which can be used in any situation. It was designed basically to go in the bottom of a boat so that it was somewhere soft for the fish to be put so it wouldn't damage itself if it tried to thrash around, which they invariably do. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. Perfect. He's bitten the other hook off. Yeah. That's it. Nineteen six. Nineteen six. Yep. The fish mustn't be able to leap out of the bag, because obviously you're going to be standing up to do the weighing job. At that moment, it could do itself an awful lot of damage, so they must be fairly secure. Well, in a minute, it's gathering strength. Bream. Oh. Bream, roach and hybrids between the two are the main fodder fish of pike in this part of Ireland. Roach aren't native to Ireland and only appeared at Killikeen in the past 20 years in a massive population explosion, which is the main reason there are so many pike here. A pike nearly always attacks its prey in the same way, which is why Hugh mounts his bait like this. It grabs the fish across the middle in its alligator-like jaws and then turns it and swallows it head first. What are you going to do? I think I'll make up a few traces. Why not? Just in case we get some action later. Colin uses semi-barbless hooks and three-strand 20-pound wire for his trace making. I managed to get this through here. So I lock the first, or the top travel, lock it in position like that. Right. Then there's no way that that will pull out. Just heat the wire up till it's red. Heating the wire just makes it a little bit softer. If you use under 20 pounds, 15 pound wire will very often break mm. when yeah. you're playing a fish right. because you've turned it back on itself, you've kinked the line. And there we are, nice and neat. And strong. And strong. For the traces, I'll use a Barclay swivel. Yes, there we are. Tremendous strength, 40 pound breaking strain. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. Yeah. About 18 yeah. inches of a trace. That's it. And there's one completed trace yeah. still on the twiddling stick. Quite simple. And you can buy a rig bin already made up. Oh. I made my own before there were too many on the market. It's just a, a sheet of ether foam rolled up. Yeah. Bits in the old tin. 
biscuit tin. Right. And that's it. The pike will lie in ambush and will watch its prey for quite a long time. During the summertime, they do a lot of this in weedy water in the shallows. And with a tremendous burst of speed, will pounce. One should never wait for the pike to swallow. I say, strike the fish quickly, hook it cleanly in the mouth and recover it quickly so that it's not hurt. You can get a great thrill out of a, a pike of 12 or 13 pounds. Face the camera. Camera at a jaunty angle. <laughs> That's better. Can you hold the fish near the tail? Thank you. And the tail's off. I think the um, I think the fish is better looking than you, but there we are. What on earth have you got there, Colin? That's a drift float here. A drift float? Yeah. But yeah. you've never seen anything like this before? No. Tell me more. It's a method used in England for the big gravel pits and the reservoirs. It starts off at the top. We have a stop knot. That's tied in power gum, so it doesn't damage the line. Yeah. We go down a bit further, we should come across a bead. That slides up against the stop knot. Yeah. OK? And then we come on to pilot float. Yes. It's uh, the waggle float. Yeah. And it's fitted onto a piece of plastic tubing. Right. It needs to be fairly stiff tubing. Yes. I've actually glued this on, but you can actually, mm -hmm. you know, just put it on with some silicone rubber. Right. And hold it in position. And then we come to the float itself. That's just a straightforward poly ball. Right. Held in position with two pieces of silicone rubber again. Just right. keep it in position. The vein is plastic, very pliable and it's held in position with a rubber band and it's just slipped on and off like that yeah see but you won't buy one quite like this because this is made from a, a swing tip fiberglass it's right. very very flexible right. i've just whipped an eye onto the bottom mm -hmm. the whole thing's attached to the line with just an ordinary link swivel yes and then we come down to another bead and another stop knot Mm -hmm. The idea of that is to stop the float sliding down when you're casting and actually tangling with the trace. I see. OK? Mm -hmm. So that keeps it out of the way there. And then we come down to the business end. Well, you have a lead, I see. And we have a drilled bullet that's actually attached to the swivel. If a pipe comes from underneath and takes upwards... You have a lift bite. You lift bite, your float will lay flat. Right. Which that won't do in other situations. Yeah. It must be locked onto the line. Very good. OK. I see that you have a roach. Yes. Yes, it's a roach dead bait, mounted on two trebles. Mm -hmm. and that will go out behind the float, or the float yes. will drag it out across there. Yes. Um, I've mounted it as I would a live bait, in actual fact. Yes. You know, because you normally fish a live bait in this situation. In England? In England. But not in Ireland? Not in Ireland. Another little interesting thing. We have this automatic greaser on the line. Right. Oh, it actually fits into the rod ring. Yes. Um, it's split mm. so that you can remove it for casting. It's just packed with grease. Yeah. And as you let the line pay out, the grease goes out right. on the line. Mm. And when you wind it back in, it's greasing it again. So it's getting greased two ways. Well, let's get this Kantiki going. I want to see it working. OK. Got the um, auto greaser out. All right. Got it set about 10 feet, is that right? 10 feet it is, I right think. Okay. The grease, of course, is to make the line float. And float it must so the tackle can be controlled and the angler can make a positive strike when a pike takes the bait. The size of the vein can be varied to suit the strength of the wind. It must be 50 yards out now, Colin. Probably a bit further than that, actually, here. Yeah. 
The wind has dropped. Yes, it could present problems, but you can actually change direction. You can get the float to work along the bank. Yes. Just by moving up the bank now and throwing a bow into the line, drag the float along and bring the bait behind it. You know, if you can find shelves and drop-offs, things like that, you can work along them. If the wind was up a bit more, I feel sure I could reach the island and work the bait right the way along the front of it, you know, yes. into the fish holding areas. What will happen when you get a 20 pound pike out there now? We're going to have fun and games with any sort. Yeah, sure will, at that distance. Do you know the ghost of Owen Row O'Neill from that castle is looking down on you? Is that right? Yes. It's the first time we've seen a drift float. <laughs> Unhooking fish is probably the most difficult part of pike fishing. Any fool can throw out a bait with a hook in it and catch a pike. But once he's got it on the bank, what does he do with it? Most people, when they first start, or if they're not serious, get the fish on the bank and they've got no idea where to start. Turn the fish over, generally onto its side or onto its back, lift the gill cover up, lift the pike's head up, and generally he will open his mouth. If he doesn't, just slip your thumb of your free hand just inside his mouth, not actually on his teeth, and you can force the jaws apart. I always use forceps. There's no need to use a pike gag, which basically is a large spring-like device that forces the jaws apart. It's barbaric, there's no need to use it. Most fish won't swim right away they will lay there. If they show any sign of rolling over, they must be held by the tail and held upright and just allowed to recover gently. Just look at this old bait here. Look at, look at the size of the hook. It must be 80 or 90 years old. When people caught pike, they had no intention of conserving this pike. It's dreadful, isn't it, Colin? It certainly is. The hook's in comparison with today's. Basically, they were using those just to catch fish to kill them. Quiet. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Not too much, because... Uh, J'ai déjà très chaud, very, very hot. <laughs> this is the real old traditional Irish copper and silver spoon. Very effective. And in fact, it's still used with success. You know, it flashes beautifully through the water and the pike can see it. It's, it's really great. Is it used today? Oh, yes, yeah, very, very common in Ireland, in the big lakes too. It's great. René Lachenmeyer is a tackle oh, dealer from Strasbourg and a regular visitor to Cavan. Yeah, it's right, it's Swiss X. Mm -hmm. Because it makes uh, vibration and the pike hears uh, this vibration. Yeah, we forget about this, that, uh, that the pike actually hears in the water. Yes, he hears very well, yeah. very good. Many types of that. Yes, many types, and uh, the lead can be changed. Mm. I've used that on the River Barrow in Ireland, and it's really great there too. Yeah. This yes. is a vibrating one, this is the big S. Probably one of the most successful plants. It's certainly one of my most successful ones, right. anyway. We've had a lot of 30 pound pike caught with those mm. in Ireland. Yeah, very yeah. effective. What's that one? This one. Yeah. It's a head. It's the. Ah. Well, the American company. Ah, very old, yeah. too. Yeah, extremely old. I think this one is a floater, and it's made to imitate a frog. Yeah. It looks fun, yes. <laughs> <laughs> If I'd only got one choice, yes. I think these are the ones, or certainly a variation of these, mm. would be the ones that I chose. How, do, how are yeah. they? I know them, and I use also yeah, this. Yes, it's very great. good. That brings us on to another oh. innovation. <laughs> what is that? What can you do with that? He thinks it's a Christmas decoration. <laughs> That's right. It's you not for pike fishing. <laughs> it's not for pike for fishing. Pike fishing yes. Yes. Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's a buzzer. An American oh, buzzer. Right. Different colours also, Colin. Yes, you can get them all, all different colours here. How do you use that? As you would any other... Artificial bird, baits uh, catch more and bigger fish in Ireland, fish while bird natural bird baits do best in England. It may be because English pike have developed a taste for weak and disabled prey released from keep nets, something that isn't as common in Ireland. What's the 
four cars. Oh, four cars is bad. Is it? Yeah. Well, I need these life jackets today, then. Blustery. Right. So you put your stuff in first. back of your mind, there is this dream that the next time that indicator drops or that float goes down, there could be the fish of your lifetime. You're ready at last, are you? Yes, it's all set. Yeah, that's good. Took you long enough. Oh, well, <laughs> I've been careful, very careful. Between us, we have a fair variation. Yeah. And should get them going. <laughs> and there are one or two out there, I'm sorry. So. I firmly believe, actually, that in, in the big Shannon waters, very big, deep lakes, mm. we were bound to have 50-pound fish. Really? I'm certain of that, yes. There's reports of fish up to 90 pounds in the past, isn't there? That's right. Yeah, in, in Victorian times, when um, pike were very popular, even with salmon anglers, there was one pike caught 90 and a half pounds in Loch Derg. And Fred Bullo says that that is the world record rod caught pike. Fantastic. It's a big fish. It was five feet eight inches long. <laughs> Ninety and a half pounds. That net's definitely not big enough. <laughs> Modern Irish pike fishing has become an all season sport, and there is a particular magic to fishing in the lazy days of summer. I can see you and I can't get you. Just hope he's coming up that way. You could say that. Where? He's round this post about 26 times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what a fish. You want a saw? I want a saw. I think I need two or three saws. Oh. <laughs> what can I do? I don't know. I don't know if I can get the rod through there this time. I know which way he's gone now, anyway. Oh, what a bit of wonderful angling skill there. Right, now we're getting to the net this time. No messing. Don't you go in there again. You devil. You little devil. Just lift. That's it. Stay, keep it like that. Don't move it now. Once you get it in here, there you come, there he goes. Oh, the devil. Stay still. Oh, stay still. You've really got off now, haven't you? Especially under that jetty. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to snip those barbs off. Come on, really? That's it. Good. Like that, we've lost the hook, but we've got a nice pike. Yes, I'm doing perfect. Right, down in. Eighteen pounds. Eighteen pounds, six ounces. Not a pike to hit the headlines, but a fine fish all the same. 
and one that certainly put up an interesting fight. In pike fishing, perhaps more than any other branch of the sport, the sheer size of the fish is what motivates the anglers. And somewhere out there in Ireland's waters are the 30s, the 40s, and maybe even a 50. <laughs> 